The Cybathon was a world premiere. It was the first ever event for people with disabilities who are using robotic aids to perform activities of daily living. And that attracted press and media from all over the world. The stadium was sold out. We had 4,600 tickets sold and additionally there were about 1,000 people who were helpers or members of the teams. It's everything I was expecting. I did the math and counted how many teams were going to be here. I knew it was going to be a lot of people competing and a lot of different events, but I didn't think they would catch on to be as big a thing as it is. I uh, imagined that it, that it could be great, but yesterday it was, it was amazing. At the Sabaton we had six different disciplines. They had to climb stairs using a wheelchair or running upstairs with a prosthetic aid or exoskeletal aids. We had also one race with arm prosthetic devices where people had to show that they're able to do some tasks which are relevant for preparing breakfast. And there was a brain-computer interface race where completely paralyzed pilots, they could drive and control an, a computer avatar in a game. And then we had a race, completely paralyzed pilots are using a passive bike and the muscles are artificially stimulated because those pilots are completely spinal cord injured. It feels pretty incredible. The, the journey from just the idea of riding a bike, only earlier this year, I don't think it's all hit me yet that I'm here and I've been doing well. He was very nervous before the trials and um, pretty tense and had a hard time wrapping his head around it. For this race though, he's calm, he knows what he has to do, he's focused and he's ready to succeed. At the first, uh, I could see the arena and say, wow, this is a big place where we are. So much people are, are watching and, and so much people are interested. I was a little bit nervous. Man war natürlich sehr aufgeregt. Es war ein gewisser Druck da. Man will natürlich auch gewinnen. The pilots uh, are a bit anxious at first, and then they are eager. They just want to, to do it, and they want to get through it. Hat man im Prinzip alles ausgeblendet und man hatte bloß noch diesen Tunnelblick. And then it becomes a bit of a competition. It's really kind of a sporting event uh, for these guys. I mean, it's been quite a journey, you know. I mean, starting back in March, um, I was training down in Mexico with really high humidity and high heat. Team Cleveland has put so much effort into this whole thing. Having us come out there as many times as we did and the money and the funds that were spent on really pursuing excellence, and it paid off. And then uh, Wednesday night, it was decided that I was going to be the lead rider. And then uh, at medical check-in, I had movement in my in my right leg his injury level wasn't as high as the level that they needed to be to compete he has some hip flexor motion and because of that even though it's small um, they did have to disqualify him you know you can't help but have some disappointment i mean there is a certain um, deflation that occurs at that very second but then there's a realization that it's not an eye program it's a wee program. You know, I just chipped in and just did what I could, you know, to, to make it better. So that put Mark in as the runner-up, moved him from the uh, standby person back up to the actual guy. <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting to find out that I was going to compete and representing the United States is awesome. That's a dream for many people and uh, I got to be one of the chosen few that got to be in the right place at the right time, keep doing the next right thing and now the next right thing has happened. So in the first race, I'm relaxed, I'm concentrated, and uh, I only see the tasks. So uh, for me, the biggest thing was to cone. I couldn't grab it because the hand was so small. I uh, leave it there, I go to the next step, I say, okay, the hot wire loop, for me, it was not so easy, the handle was so big. I touched, I touched the wire, so okay, it ends before it starts, I need to go on. <laughs> Well, Lucas was quite nervous. The, the crowd and the uh, competitive environment uh, got him a little bit uh, nervous. 
and he, he, was, he did very well until the last uh, obstacle. He caught his toe a little bit and then lost balance and, and then he dropped the, uh, the object he needed to carry over. But I think overall uh, the combination of, of Lucas as pilot uh, with the Powered Leg prototype uh, was a quite highly performing. In the last few minutes, as we wheeled up into the ready room, I was getting very excited and starting to feel a little anxious. And then once I made to the first turn and everything was working properly, I relaxed and just finished the race. It felt good to go around the track and have nothing go wrong. And I know I only have to do that one more time. If I can just compete like I trained, then everything will be fine. Watching him race was very emotional. I'm so proud of him and the team. He just raced so smooth and um, it was a beautiful sight. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of courage, I think, for these pilot wheelchairs or in exoskeleton or, or in FES bikes uh, to cover like the distance and go through the obstacles. It doesn't need to be the most complex and the newest technology to do a very good performance. At the leg prosthetics race, the gold medal winner from Ursa company was winning with a passive prosthesis. Our pilot uh, Elgi Sveinsson completed first on the overall uh, ranking. Elgi is, is, a, is a Paralympic athlete. He, he throws the javelin in Paralympic. You could see uh, he's a very fast walker, uh, but you can also see that uh, how much he's in control. It doesn't need to be high-tech to get a good performance. That's an important message to the community. You have to focus on the task and then you can perform best. And in the second race, I was a little bit more nervous. In the last race, I have problems with the rotation. So sometimes I need to do it manually. Then one time I do it manually and then I, uh, I screw the hand out of the socket. And, oh, this is not what I want. And then I say, OK, I finished fourth place. And it's for me, it's OK. I say, yes, I'm happy that I can take part in the final race. I'm the only woman and I'm in the final. Obviously, Carol is my biggest cheerleader. When Mark was racing, you know, I was filming the whole thing. Then, of course, I had the cowbell and ringing the cowbell, so my film's all bouncy because uh, I was screaming for him. When he did win, um, it was just so awesome. You know, I could see his face, big smile on his face. Very grateful to be here. <laughs> when I won, we won. It's me and Carol always. Das größte Hindernis war wirklich diese diese Piste, die hin und her gesprungen ist und die, die Steine, wo man über den Fluss gehen, gehen sollte. Da war ich wieder ein bisschen vor, der amerikanische Kollege denn gemacht. Ich habe diese schräge Piste dann ganz gut gemeistert, die konnte er nicht machen. Das passierte fast gleichzeitig, aber weil wir eben ein bisschen schneller gehen konnten, da konnte ich in den letzten Metern dann noch wieder... It was a big responsibility to organize this hackathon. It, it was a risk, yeah? it could have failed. And I was relieved because everything worked out. When I saw the people in the audience, it was amazing to see not only people in the wheelchairs or people with an arm prosthesis. It was also great to see families, little children, young people who are fascinated about robotics. Well, I think that when you get that, that, that human element, when you bring people together, it's a different thing than papers being passed back and forth. We really raised awareness and, and created uh, something around this. The fact that the event took place and, and was a big success is the biggest uh, win for everybody. It was for me very surprising to see these emotions, this disappointment of those who did not win, but also this happiness and these tears in the eyes of the pilots who did win. It's an incredible feeling to, uh, to come out come out as the winner. I've been in second place many times in my life, so I'm grateful for uh, where I'm at, but I also think we have hundreds of winners, 70 teams of winners, 70 miracles. And for other people in a wheelchair to have that kind of freedom and see that they can do this, it can change your whole outlook on life. It, it gives you like a, a very complete picture of what's available out there in, in a single stop. It's natürlich super klasse, dass ich gewonnen habe. Es hängt auch natürlich 
Das ganze Team hängt damit dran, das hat auch mitgewonnen. These teams who did participate at the Cybathlon, doesn't matter if they did win something or not. They are part of a, of a movement. And now it's also our responsibility to go on, to keep on this movement. Man muss das jetzt erstmal alles verarbeiten und äh, realisieren, was man eigentlich geschafft hat. We always have new projects, so uh, now we're gonna go back to Iceland, we're gonna go back to work. All the technology that goes back for decades going into what you saw here today, those are the people that made this possible for me. I just push the button and steer the bike. Uh, the technology behind me is really what makes everything happen, and I'm excited to see what's gonna happen there next. We will go on, we will organize another big event in four years with more disciplines, a larger audience in a larger stadium. And I would like to see more of this, not have to wait four years for the next one. Interacting with each other is really key to success. And that's the important thing of the Cybertron, to start a conversation, to start an awareness about disabilities and to help the society to include all people.